Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 43rd episode of Courier Podcast. Today, I'm joined with Mr. Anton Hallman. He's a German illustrator currently based in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, with that out of the way, could you please give us a little introduction on how we got into visual arts and design? Yeah. Hello, everyone. And hello, I'm Tim. Thank you for having me. Um, so how I do my work? Uh, it's basically... Uh, just illustrator in the main process. Uh, but I try to uh, do some sketches before on uh, Photoshop. I try to uh, work on paper before, but somehow I got a bit lazy and I like the digital sketch. Uh, and I think clients do like it better too because scan. Um, an image wasn't my, uh, yeah, what well, was my strange at all? <laughs> all right, and um, well, I actually want to mention something I forgot I need to do mention it in the intro. Sorry, and um, by the way, uh, for people who are listening or watching, um, today as of the day is the days of recording, which is like 13th of March. Is uh, the next day, which will be the 14th of March, is an special day, and that day is the first anniversary of the Career Podcast. And um, well, why do I say that? Because I want to do personally a giveaway. It's not a sponsor, it's just from my own pocket. I want to give away a Photoshop course from Udemy. And I'm gonna I'm gonna of course put the details about the giveaway soon, like maybe tomorrow or, or yeah, I'll I'll post it in the Instagram page tomorrow, so keep an eye on that and um Make sure to share it around with your friends, you know, in case they could, you know, win a, win a course. And, well, that's the segue. We'll move on to the next question. Now, sorry about that, Mr. Alman. No problem. Congratulations. Oh, thank year. you. Thank Great. you so much. Uh, all right, next question. Were you originally studying art and design or you were pursuing another career path? Um, yeah, I... Uh, I started out studying theater science and Russian, and I uh, was kind of fond of uh, Russian children books, and I liked all this uh, aesthetic uh, on the from the early early twentieth century. And I asked myself, oh, why do I want to uh, focus on the text? Um, and why do I study theater science and thought, no, it's the images I like. And so I tried to apply for a illustration uh, course in Hamburg and um, on a university. And yeah, I started, I think, 2010 to study uh, illustration in Hamburg and finished it last year with my master's degree. And yeah. All right, and Tur um, time, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, now with that out of the way, of course, in the introduction, we already mentioned that you're an illustrator. I mean, uh, for people who are watching on YouTube, I mean, it's pretty obvious because, uh, like, in the video section, like, there's there's like two windows, and the, right next to us is a big window, which is like a time lapse of the artist's work. So, I mean, it's kind of obvious. It's kind of a spoiler that, of course, you're yeah. an illustrator. Um, but with that out of the way. What is your main branch of design now? Now, I'm asking you a bit more specific that you're focusing on and tell us about your experience from the start of it until now. Yeah, my main branch is editorial. Uh, I try to focus or always try to focus on editorial even when I started studying because magazines and newspapers uh, were a big thing for me. I don't know why but i think the uh, texture of of a certain image so making just one image for a text or for a specific topic was always attracting to me rather than doing a story in a comic book or in a children's book and so i uh, really enjoyed working uh, or working for myself on articles in the beginning because i uh, just uh, bought newspapers, thought, oh, there's no illustration. I just cut out the text and try to illustrate to it. And in 2013, a, uh, an agency came to me. Um, they were also studying on my, at my university. 
and they were forming this agency and uh, asked me if I would like to join them. And so I got my first job in 2013 uh, through this agency and I'm still with them till today. And I'm really thankful that they took me because it's uh, uh, a really, really nice uh, cooperation we uh, are having. And yeah, so it started, so I started building up a, in an actual editorial portfolio and um, yeah, that's basically what I do till today. And I focus um, nowadays more on corporate editorial means uh, so customer magazines or magazines which are just internal f of companies and not the magazines you can buy in a shop or something like that. And uh, because they are getting less and less, you have to t say that, and the, they uh, don't have many budgets any longer. So they tend to use more stock images and stuff like that. And the companies and uh, customer magazines and stuff like that from health agencies or uh, some uh, climate uh, uh, fabrications or something, whatever you like. They are doing, uh, uh, they're having a budget for, for their uh, belongings and um, it's quite a good feel to get into uh, um, if you're doing editorial stuff. So uh, also marketing and stuff like that, yeah. All right, and... Um... How does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a project? Yeah, so usually it's, I get the briefing it's, uh, in the beginning and um, they first, of course, they ask me if I have time to do it and uh, uh, we, we do uh, try to find out a schedule when, whatever, when. Uh, it shall be finished and stuff like that and try to talk through the budget and then I start going through the text the briefing what do they want They um, I always like if they send me um, some work examples from myself so what do they like in my work and or sometimes they uh, have a layout even ready or put something in uh, so I can see, okay, that's what they want. And I try to uh, do something new out of it because I don't want to copy myself. But um, then I st uh, start research and I normally um, try to uh, word search first. So if it's about, um, let's say, squirrels or <laughs> if it's about economic disasters or, the, or electronic cars or something like that. I try to word search just uh, a couple of things which are in the text or the briefings it's just to get a feeling for certain topics. What are forms of it? What are um, What is the feeling of it and how, how does it look? Which colors are used in the topics on Google or images or something like that? And then I uh, sketch it out, a rough sketch and first, and I try to get more detailed and specific. And then I send it to the uh, client. And uh, normally I do one or two changes to the whole sketch, and then I uh, uh, try to work it out in Illustrator. And uh, so after after I finished it, the corrections are coming in. So just small corrections. I try. normally I write two or three corrections in the contract that they are okay. So corrections are color changes or do that person in a different pose or something. Not an overall uh, a re new work or a rework of the of the image. Yeah. All right, awesome. And um, now in this, uh, like, I want to talk you a bit about your, like some of your extra works that, I mean, of course, for every guest that comes by, I always do have, like a background check on them, like the, yeah. about their arts and arts and history. And first I want to, you know, ask you about, like, I want you to talk a bit about your podcast because for anyone who's listening, like uh, Mr. Holman also has a podcast about illustration. Pictori podcast, P-I-C-T-O-R-I. -I. It's also on Anchor and Spotify. 
um, you, you can check that out. It's pretty interesting. And uh, I want I want you to talk about like uh, when the idea of the podcast came by, what the name means, basically anything you can tell us. Yeah. Um... The starting point was my master degree. I um, uh, made a children's book about explorers, and I had to do a theory um, a thesis to this too. And I wrote about the nonfiction book and the his- children book and the history of it. And this was so interesting. And due to my uh, theater science study, I always liked the theoretical part of, of it too, of illustration. And that illustration in, uh, isn't that well known. So the history of illustration isn't well known to people. They The art histories and uh, faculties don't uh, emphasize this part at all and so i thought yeah just do something and about it and so i can read about it and um, educate myself and also share it with other people and um, yeah that's how it started out and my wife bought this microphone to, because she wanted to do some uh Uh, YouTube videos or some uh, podcast things too. And I thought, yeah, now it's the time I can just grab the microphone and record something. And um, that that was the starting point. But I'm uh, currently not uh, recording anything because I have so much other work to do. And um, it's a bit hard to uh, find time to do it currently. Yeah. And it's also, um, it was also hard to, so we moved to Stockholm last year. And uh, due to that, I uh, tried to speak more English and to improve my English. And so I thought, yeah, let's do the podcast in English too. <laughs> But um, I tried to, uh, um, I uh, recorded a German version after that too. And I, uh I was fond of how much easier it is to talk in your native language and how much easier it was to me to just blab about it, so <laughs> chit chat about it, yeah. And uh, so I don't know which which way it will go, but yeah, it started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. And uh, I mean, I think it would be really interesting if you could like make it like a monthly thing, you know. So yeah. it's not that. So I mean, you could, you know, technically, it's much easier to find time if it's monthly. And you could, you know, but of course, when it's monthly, you also have to do it, you know, as a challenge, both in English and German. So, I mean, in yeah. German version, as I said, you're just going to pump it out quickly. But English version, of course, there's it's going to be a bit of a challenge because you need to write the script, you need to, you know, all that. Because, you know, my format of podcast is, is, is much easier. I just write the questions and I ask and I get the answers. Um, yeah. But your kind of podcast is actually, the th- it's kind of like a narrative style of podcast, like you need to memorize the structure of like a lot of information and it's going to be much more challenging. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I think it, I, I'm just saying, just keep it up. I mean, try to find ways to, you know, continue with more episodes because it's, it's kind of a pity because it's, it's actually a good idea what you're yeah, doing. Exactly. And um, yeah, no problem. And uh, you mentioned when I asked about the podcast that you're doing a children's book. Um, yeah. And I think I, Did some research on your work it's explore the world as you said yes exactly could you please explain about it the details the story yeah so um it's a non-fiction book about explorers um so every main explorer a child should know so the the typical ones like columbus and james cook and uh, etc but It also tries to focus on natives, um, on the native people and on the native side. So what happens to them and what are explorers to us and how did it change the world? And um, yeah, so it focuses on the good and the bad signs and uh, because they are not uh, always emphasized And um, I'd I'd like to change that, especially because there are so many native explorers too, or helpers to the main guys we know, or even women who 
were just uh, cut out of cut out of the history due to the fact that their husband was the explorer and um, the uh, yeah the the story of exploring is always better told if it's just one hero and not a collective group or uh, no, even a cultural. Uh, different group and stuff like that and so I try to tell all this, these stories and try to uh, give an overview of, of this yeah interesting and um, <clears throat> Christopher Columbus I mean yeah <laughs> there's that I mean it was just in the right context I needed to put that out and <laughs> yeah. all right, next question okay. um, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most Yeah, um, so the main uh, inspiration came from some mid-century um, illustrators like Charlie Harper, so really graphical forms. And I try. Uh, I started out uh, doing more ge uh, geometric forms and being more limited. And I changed it through the years and became more and more figurative. And uh, I loved the uh, French illustrators like Hergé and so Tintin and all those stuff. And uh, I think in the current currently, I really like Owen Davy, who's a great illustrator, or Dieter Braun in Germany, uh, who also do well, both um, do very illustrator vectory graphical illustration and i really love that i uh, um i like to i always like forms and how they build up to uh, an illustration or an image uh, yeah pretty interesting um or like my last guest on the podcast on episode 42 i mean which is this one is uh, episode 43 as we're talking now Yeah. Um, was Jos Derix, and uh, he also uh, cited like Hergé as like a big inspiration for him. Yeah, and and I mean for anyone who didn't listen to the last episode, I'm, I'm I said it in that episode. I'm gonna say it again. I want to give a huge shout out to Hergé, and for anyone who haven't who hasn't even read a single Tintin comic, I highly urge you to do it. I mean, I don't condone pirating, but just no, actually no, this is going wrong. Sorry. Go buy the comic book and just... <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, that was going a bit off track, sorry. Um, yeah, but what... Uh, it was, it's just because of my passion, you know, it's just first out there. But, yeah, dude, what I'm trying to say is just give the comic book a try. The comic books a try, Tintin comic books, Tintin Adventures. They're so great and just amazing. And the, mo the amazing thing about it is that, you know, he gathered all this information about different subjects and stories without... In the, he, he was without internet, you know? Like, you know, yeah. we, we take it for granted. We don't even think about this stuff, you know, but imagine how many hours he probably went to, like, you know, libraries and just, you know, searching different subjects and, you know, gathering information to be, you know, knowledgeable on making this story, you know, um, on everything, you know. And, I mean, that's just an amazing comic book. I highly recommend everyone to go check it out. And Herja was honestly such an underrated, like, illustrator, Like, like, I mean, of course, it's well-known, so it's technically not underrated. Um, but still, you know, compared to, you know, other illustrators, that their works are still, you know, relevant. Like, it's yeah. kind of sad that Tintin isn't relevant as much. I mean, of course, there was a movie they made, you know, from his works and material, but still. Um, all right. Now, next question. What is the main subject of your artworks and what made them interesting to you? Um, you mean the main uh, subject I do in my private uh, illustrations? Yes. Or? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I should have been more specific. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. Sure. So uh, yeah, um, it's uh, a wide range of of topics. Actually, um, I really like doing more fun and quirky characters at the moment because. Um, due to the work for for companies or um, editorials and editorial things, it um, so these things are more technical or more. I think I can say modest, so they aren't um, 
always that funny and outgoing, if I can say it. So they are funny and they have a touch of humor and, and, and such things. But um, certain uh, strange characters or that uh, maybe uh, a fruit or uh, something, a ball can have eyes or ha can have a face. I can't do that in editorial illustrations because it's not wanted because it's a different topic and so i like to illustrate uh, my bunnies and they are doing some food stuff or something like that or there are food or i like to illustrate uh, uh, other yeah fictional characters and that's what i really enjoy and at the moment i'm doing a cyberpunk series to uh, try to put my Uh, characters into a cyberpunk world and that's quite uh, funny because m mostly cyberpunk is really uh, dirty and uh, uh, kind of dystopian and I tr try to make it some somehow a bit more happier <laughs> and have mm -hmm. a more happier environment yeah but that's what I normally do and I really like science fiction and, and yeah mm. Um, that's actually an interesting point you mentioned, but um, I actually don't think, um, like, I don't want to be too technical or anything, but you know, it's just something interesting to me as well. But like, there's different subsets of cyberpunk, and I think what you described, like, I don't remember their name correctly. Like, um, cyberpunk isn't necessarily dystopian, but I think um, retroscape, like, I, I don't remember, but like the version of cyber cyberpunk that you know it relates to a dystopian future i think it had a different name it's not cyber yeah punk. it can be yeah yeah but but of course i get what you mean about that yeah but, yeah so so uh, it's yeah. basically uh heavy driven by so my the illustration topic is heavily driven by mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the cyberpunk theme because the game came out last year and i like this uh, city environment and uh, mm. uh, yeah uh, i like big buildings and strange figures yeah yeah pretty good point and um what technologies and softwares do you mostly use for your works uh, excuse me i didn't get that uh, um what technologies and softwares oh. do you mostly use yeah. for your works by technology i mean hardware uh, tablet anything yeah so Basically, I use a uh, Cintiq to first sketch out my illustration ideas and uh, the software is Photoshop. It's the easiest way to, to sketch for me. And then I export it and work on an iMac to finish it, uh, the illustration in, in Illustrator. And that uh, those both uh, two tools are my main source. Sometimes I use a pen and draw in a notebook, but uh, or sometimes even an iPad and I use uh, instead of Photoshop, I use uh, Procreate. But uh, due to the fact that my wife always had the tablet, I tend to use the, uh, the Cintiq and, yeah, and Photoshop. All right, awesome. And any advice and tips for a good portfolio and a resume for artists? Well, the best advice I can give is that the portfolio should always be specific to the client. So if you're doing a portfolio for a certain magazine, buy a couple of copies of the magazine, look at it, what, what topics do they cover, What are they talking about? What style do they like? Or what? So, for example, there's a certain uh, economic uh, magazine in Germany. I always wanted to work for them in, <laughs> when I was uh, a student. But I noticed later on that my style didn't fit at all. So it, it wasn't necessary that I sent in my portfolio because I knew they wouldn't uh, take me because the style was so different from mine. But And so it's really important to just see what kind of aesthetic the magazine or the agency is going to. And um, I always like smaller portfolios. So I think 15 to 20 uh, pictures are enough. And 
um, as the saying goes, always start with a good one and end with a good one. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's basically all I can say to that. But the most important thing is that the client, if you talk to him or if you send him an email, knows that you know his product, that you know what is what it's about. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. And it's always nice to... Um, to send out postcards and stuff like that if you have ongoing clients and so just to check on them. And I, I really liked in the current state of uh, Corona that the uh, many clients from magazines uh, tend to video call me and I didn't have, I haven't ever seen them. And now due to <laughs> Corona, I see them and that's nice to have an image of them. So to know how they look True. like, and it's always nice um, to have this. And I really, so if you are in a bigger city, so I lived in Hamburg before and they, it's a media city and we had a lot of uh, publishers there. It's always nice to also say that you are able to get to the, uh, to the office of them. So it's sometimes in some cases, it's easier if you have, the work or if you have the job uh, to go to them and talk about it if, if they want to and just to yeah support this uh, this little offering of uh, seeing someone in person is just nice and yeah that's an advice I can give to you yeah and like one of the reasons that i really love like doing this podcast because i personally like learn a lot of stuff and this moment right now and I, I want to point out something I've only heard that, like, uh, the thing you said about the portfolio that puts your first, you know, the best uh, works at the beginning and the last, yeah. you know, and your recent post. And someone else, I I quite don't remember, but said the same thing, but in a different way. And, um, yeah, I think they said that you should put your best work at first, then your second best work at bottom, then third at top, fourth at, and it just goes like yeah. this till your worst work becomes in the middle, sandwich in the middle. And that's such an interesting point that I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, but none of them like explained like this, you know, and mentioned it this way, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a great way to like explain that's, it. That's it's such good. a super in good way of like, you know, yeah. such a great tip, you know, because like it's... It, it, it revolves around the subject of human psychology because, you know, as it's, it's a human thing, you know, when we just, for anyone, you know, you oh. go to street and just show a portfolio to someone, you know, portfolios. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you put your like best works, like five, six best works at the top, and there's like a couple of like, you know, medium works at the bottom. Yeah. The person who arranged their work as, you know, first, second, third, fourth, like that, they're going to pick yeah. like nine out of 10 times. Like that's such a golden rule, you know, and, like this podcast is also kind of a research project on you know the way that you know artists you know do like their behavior and the, how they work you know and like this is like such a key point that that I've we I've reached to when it comes to like the question about portfolios and resumes when it comes yes, to art yes, yes. and I, and I'm quite happy about it to be honest like thank you so much for that answer um to you know hammer down this reinforce oh, yeah. that kind of answer you're welcome i really like that you have this archive of uh, creatives and oh. uh, i really like <laughs> that you. yeah it's great it's great yeah and uh all right next let's move on to the next question uh yeah. what are, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about and what kind of project is it of course i mean if it's something that there's an nda involved you can't we can just quickly right now skip this question but if that's not the case tell us what you're doing um yeah i'm uh uh, currently working on uh, something for uh, so a cover story for a um, what is it called? It's a um, real estate um, magazine. So a a uh, real estate agency who um, owns several uh, buildings in Germany and different cities and. The cover story was about um, how the neighborhood changes through uh, Corona times, but also what the future will bring. So um, a green neighborhood and more flowers and plants, more 
uh, social activities, more culture stuff like that, and that neighbors and neighborhood should be a bigger topic uh, in big cities in the future and not just an anonymous living. And that was it's about. So, uh, and the other one was um, I did uh, was a history of um, of plants and how plants uh, and humans with plants uh, um, acted. So how agriculture began, what the future will bring, and all this stuff. And uh, I, that was really uh, a fantastic work because I had all the freedom I could get to to do it. And within the next days, we also, with the little Gestalten uh, publisher, we also try to focus on an upcoming book next to the Explore the World one. And yeah, that's in the pipeline currently. And uh, well, with that out of the way, could you also tell us what area beside the area you're working on right now are you interested to explore and learn? Well, um, what I mean by that is, let me rephrase that in a like another way, which I always mostly do, you know, to guest, um, yeah. like a, as a thought process, like thought experiment. Uh, imagine right now you got a text on your phone and it said that a million dollars has been deposited to your bank account. Well, what that entails is that you're going to not worry about bills or, you know, any any other payment you might have, you know. And what that means is you're going to have a lot of free time to explore and learn and do stuff. In that free time, what would you do? What it could be doing, it could be doing anything, you know, learning, I don't know, building a restaurant, you know, a cafe, anything, you know, buying Bitcoin, you know, just tell us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me think for a minute. Um... So, uh, yeah, I, I think I would start on some personal projects, which, uh, so like books, I really would like to do a book uh, about uh, basketball <laughs> because I really like basketball and it's a book which I think will nev would never be published, but in the free time, I would like to work on that. And also to do or to have a farm. I, I would like to have chicken, to have some animals around, which calms me down and uh, uh, all those things. But um, uh, yeah, so to, to actually um, uh, try to teach some students because it's, um, I think due to the experiences I got and the stories I can tell and stuff like that, it's, it would be nice to share it with uh, students and also due to the fact that I know how um, the study worked in Germany and what kind of is missing in the study and in the, on the facu in the faculties. Uh, and yeah, I, I would like to, to just uh, teach and 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 try to to show them how actually an illustrated um, an illustrated work life uh, would look like. All right, pretty interesting. Um, a lot of people would say like traveling the world and stuff, but I, I really liked your answer that you said you just want to go on a farm and just chill. I mean, that just sounds <laughs> that sounds I mean pretty cool to be honest. Yeah, I have I have a fear of flying, so. Oh. <laughs> But I mean, but I mean oh. boats, ships, yeah, cars, yeah. <laughs> trains. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I totally get that about fear of flying. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't have fear of flight, but what I do have is actually a fear of like yeah, traveling actually by ships. I, I, oh, have yeah. a, oh, yeah. I have an, I have an intense fear of ocean. Yeah. And I think it's kind of rooted in when I think when I was a kid, I watched Pirates of Caribbean too, and when I saw Kraken coming from. Uh, uh, that was, I think, one of the first starting points of me. <laughs> Just hate <laughs> the ocean. That's a scary place. No, yeah. And all right, uh, all right. With that out of the way, uh, with everything that's been said and done in this episode, to conclude, I'll be discussed. Um, give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skill set, like um, where to begin, um, books, courses, anything that could come to your mind. Give us a roadmap, like step by step, for someone who is zero. Yeah. Um, the first thing is just 
try to listen to a podcast like this to get to know the topic to um, maybe buy a book about the topic because there are lots of great uh, graphic designers or illustrate find your way in illustration books out there and even try to uh, reach out to a university they sometimes have open days where you can go and see how they uh, Uh, actually uh, teach and you can sit in the class for a day or something like that and uh, you can talk to people and that's the most important thing which is also um, coming to mind now because the most important part of being an illustrator for me is always to Uh, talk with other illustrators especially about budgets especially about how um, certain clients do treat you because it's important that you don't sell all your rights and that you really know that they are, that you have certain rights and stuff like that but that comes on later so basically it's really important to to talk to people to see is it something for me or not so for example studying communication design or graphic design and then you see oh i'd like to draw a bit more so i maybe uh, switch to illustration and stuff like that to just get a feeling for it what is really the th thing you uh, which is uh, driving you and uh, Uh, and then, yeah, apply for university. It's always, I think it's always a great thing to study actually a, a design uh, course because you have some more free time to to work uh, on certain projects. And uh, especially if you're doing your bachelor or your master and you can do one project and uh, focus on this and you have all the input from other students and even from uh, the profs and stuff like that. It's really great to, to have this experience going on and uh, maybe do some interns at a, uh, um, at a newspaper in a graphic uh, department. And so later on, of course, <laughs> after you checked everything. And um, yeah, that's, that's the main uh, thing to do. It's always, uh, it's, although, may, for example, I do work from home and I have a home office. Um, although I'm always alone, on, so working through digital uh, communication, But it's really, 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 really uh, communicative uh, work. So you, I think more than 50% about communication, about talking to other people, doing business things and stuff like that. And then there's the rest of the design work doing going on too. And that's uh, quite important to know that uh, you have to be... Uh, Uh, more to uh, do some more interaction with people yeah and you have to like that yeah and uh, i think that's basically that's that was a nice way to wrap everything up and thanks so much for coming by and yeah you're where, welcome where can people contact you if they had the question um where they can contact me um yep. yeah mainly um so i think the easiest way is uh via Instagram because I look at it every now and then and or they can uh, write me an email too at mail at antonhalman.de I think okay. it is and um, but I think Instagram would be the easiest and fastest way and uh, we can chit chat there too <laughs> all right I think that's about it thank you everyone for tuning in and um, take care everyone see you guys in the next episode bye Bye-bye.